We're going to start this off with the Denver Broncos. Win total sits at 8.5. Over is minus 130. To go under is even money, plus 100. To win the division, plus 550. That is actually uh, the second best odds in the division, which is kind of shocking. I I mean, it's tied with the Chargers, but we'll get to that. AFC plus 1,400 for them to win the conference to make the playoffs. They are plus 160 to not make the playoffs. They are minus 190. Projected favorites in nine games. Their projected strength of schedule is the seventh easiest in the NFL. Now, four unders and a push the last five seasons on their win total. That is not good. They uh, Everybody has expected them to be at least uh, decent for the past five years. They have not been just yet. Their win total seems to have been inflated a little bit due to all the Aaron Rodgers talk, and it it didn't come back down. The juice is still up there. The half game was added, uh, all that, and it, it's still sitting at eight and a half. So the question that I've got, is Teddy Bridgewater uh, really better than Drew Locke? I, I think so, but there are some limitations with Bridgewater. His average depth of target last year ranked 30th in the league. He may be a steadier hand, but there's not a lot of explosive upside here. Last year, they they faced the fifth most difficult schedule in the league. This year, at least per uh, projected win totals, it's the second easiest. I, I know I just said it's the seventh easiest, but that's based on last year's results. This year, second easiest based on projected. Last year, uh, you know, they lost the second most EPA due to turnovers on offense, and they gained uh, the third fewest EPA on defense, thanks to turnovers. So you would like to see some regression back to the means there. That could be a positive for them. The the Drew Lock, I mean, this team has weapons, and they got guys coming back from injuries and from COVID and all this. Like I could see them getting to to nine wins, and that's that's exactly where I'm going. I'm going to go with the over, even though it's juiced at minus one thirty. I, I think with Teddy Bridgewater there, because Drew Lock could not even hit the short stuff last year. I mean, he was awful. Even having Teddy Bridgewater, who is not exactly your your deep threat kind of quarterback, I, I think that the way that Vic Fangio and his team plays, just just don't get beat on offense. Like, just don't lose the football and, and let the defense win some games. I think they're going to be okay. Nine and eight is not unreasonable for me, so I'm going to go over. So so that's, that's where I tried to get to. I think because of the juice, I'm going to go under. I'm going to take the price strictly because – I don't believe in Drew Locke. I think he, you know, is a lesser talented Jameis Winston. <clears throat> he's gonna he's gonna turn the ball over just as much as he's gonna make explosive plays. I think this team is really, really, really good. Let's say that. Do you I think, think they do you had, think Drew Locke starts? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't I haven't paid I've paid zero attention to Denver's camp. I've I've okay? read a little bit. It looks like they're both getting reps. Yeah, they're both getting like, reps everywhere is what I've seen. Yeah. But but I haven't watched any of it on, on NFL network or any of that stuff. I don't know the answer to that. I know that Bridgewater I think is safer, but he has a ceiling. I think Drew Locke has a much lower floor, but a much higher ceiling. At the end of the day, I agree with you. Vic Fangio is going to want to play close games, hard defense. This is a good defense. I think it's really good. Tough division to play defense in. Yes. But I do think they're a really good defense. And and they're gonna they're gonna keep games lower scoring than most people. I think they have weapons that are incredibly explosive. If the the one thing I can think of, because I'd like to be wrong on this pick, by the way. I'm just I'm making a pick, and this is the, this is an honest assessment. At these prices. I'd have to go under. I just yeah. have to go under. Seven and ten is not unrealistic to me because there's a world where this all blows up if Teddy's not healthy. God forbid he blows out a, a, an injury yeah. again. Yeah. And and Drew Locke is the guy coming off the bench where we didn't believe in you, but now we need you, and now you don't know what kind of Drew Locke you're going to get. I I think this team has potential to struggle, but I also think there's a world where you're right in the sense of. If Teddy can get these explosive weapons the ball, they don't have to be deep passes. These wide receivers are talented enough that they can turn five-yard slants and in, in, in little bubble screens into 25-yard, 30-yard pass plays. Okay, yeah. They they have the weapons at receiver. They have the running game. I, I think this team is really good. I think they've got one of the best tight ends in the world. If Teddy Bridgewater starts, 
no offense, numbers are going to go through the roof. Yes. Because he's he's a dump-off guy. He's a short-pass guy. Yes. And no fan, I think no offense, unguardable. I think the reason we don't put him up there with George Kittle and, and Kelsey and these other guys is strictly because he hasn't had a quarterback to get him the ball the way those other guys have. Okay? I just think that's the truth. I think that's the truth. And he hasn't been healthy all the time. When healthy, I think that guy is an absolute monster. I like him. I worry about, I think they're a quarterback away from being a Super Bowl contender. But that quarterback is so important that I don't know that I can get them to nine wins. Well, yeah, I I see where you're coming from. It's why everybody loved them, and and the price has started fluctuating rapidly when everybody talked about Aaron Rodgers going there. It's because they got everything in place except for the QB. If this team made a run at Watson or or Rodgers next year and they can vehemently stay healthy, and, and keep most of the roster that they have now as constructed, man, that team's going to be almost in time. That division, this division now just goes through the roof. Oh, yes. 100%. Every divisional game is must watch and poor Raiders. Ooh. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.